To start off this season, Matt Chapman is leading the league in hits, RBIs, and average. He also already has a one war and his OPS is sitting at over 1,300. So it's safe to say he has solidified himself as the permanent cleanup hitter behind Vlad. These figures are a much different Chapman than what we have seen from the last few years. Of course, we saw flashes of his excellence last year with his torrid July, but for most of the year, it was the stats he produced in April that we became accustomed to. It's still early, but it truly feels like 2018 and 19 Chapman is finally back. But anyone can say that when someone's having a hot streak. So let me tell you exactly why I think this is the beginning of the resurgence in his career. And it's very simple. He's using all parts of the field. If we take a look by year, we can see that his rate of hitting to the opposite field is up by 6 or 7% from the 2020 to 2022 seasons, simulating a line closer to his earlier career figures. This isn't just coming by chance, it's actually something he set as a priority this offseason. In an interview earlier this year, Schneider stated that Chapman spent a lot of time with Bichette on his approach with two strikes and making contact. Now, Bo may only be 25 years old, but if you could have anyone teach a masterclass on hitting to the opposite field, it would definitely be him. This has led to a spray chart from Chapman that is 11 balls to the left of second base and 8 to the right, a spread that is much unlike his past three seasons. If you take a closer look, you can actually see that Chapman had zero opposite field home runs last season, and this year he's already beaten that figure with his grand slam the other day. Another reason to believe that Chapman is back is because that homer wasn't his first hit to deep right center, meaning if he continues to hit to that part of the field, then he's a prime candidate to take advantage of the new short porch in right at the Rogers Center. That could be a catalyst to bring him back to his days of hitting 35 plus home runs. This is all great news for the Jays who are on their quest to win their first World Series title since 1993, but as Chapman continues this historic run, it will only make it harder and harder to retain him. We saw earlier this year Rafael Devers and Manny Machado strike long-term deals. Chapman of course won't be getting this type of money, but these two off the market makes him the top third baseman left heading into free agency, and any team in the need for a star defensive third baseman with a middle of the lineup bat will have eyes on him. Chapman will be 31 at the end of next season, and if he can bounce back to anything close to his 2018 and 19 self, then I do not see any reason a team would not give him a deal worth 5-7 to seven years and around $125 plus million. Looking at the Blue Jays' payroll for next season, they do lose Kevin Kiermaier, Brandon Belt, Anthony Bass, potentially Whit Merrifield, and the heavy contract of Hunjin Ryu. But with the salaries of Bichette, Vlad, Varsho, Manoa, and others going to increase, it may be difficult to spend that money when it could be used for those four. Moving on to the next idea, and that is should the Jays allow the youth to take over the position? This being Addison Barger or Aurelvis Martinez. But first, a little background info on the two. Martinez, the club's number four prospect, has made his bread and butter from his raw power, hitting 28 home runs in 2021 and 30 home runs in 2022, showing signs that he can surely bring the same level of power as Chapman. But there's still a lot of holes to his game. Even though he terrorized pitchers last year, he only had a 203 average and a 732 OPS. Another question mark surrounding him is his defensive ability, which he received a mediocre 45 grade on. And he's only 21 years old, so it's safe to say he still needs more time to develop in the minor leagues, and 2024 may be too early for him to take over everyday duties at third base in the major leagues. Moving on to Barger, he's the club's number six prospect, and over the past few years, we've seen him blossom into one of the biggest names in the Jays' farm. He also turned a lot of heads this spring training, where he produced some clutch hits and showed his ability to make quality contact with a 294 average. Barger is currently in AAA and has gone up to a great start with a 320 average and an 833 OPS. He also possesses a fantastic arm, which received a 65 grade, meaning he could put it to good use at third base, placing him in prime position to take over Chapman's role. One thing I would like to know is that prospects are prospects. You can perform your whole life in the minors, but never make it in the majors, and vice versa. They're too unpredictable, and not all of them are going to turn into major league studs. But the fact that the Jays have two highly rated guys that could potentially take over Chapman is a great backup plan to have. Now we just have to wait and see, because there is a future where I see us retain Chapman and one where he goes to the highest bidder. So I'm going to enjoy the time I know we have with him, and if it is his final season with the Jays, let's hope he can finish his tenure off with a bang and a World Series ring. Let me know what you guys think the Jays should do with Chapman. Should they extend him or let the prospects take over third base next year? I hope you guys enjoyed the video, and of course, if you are a Blue Jays fan, make sure to subscribe. We're on the road to a thousand subscribers, and we are so close. Not to mention, I'll be uploading all season long, and you will surely not want to miss out. Thank you guys for all the support, and I'll see you in the next video.